So Malvina is uh, washing the sheets for the bed right now, so I figured it's a uh, perfect time. Look, we uh, wanted to do this anyways, but now we're going to install the uh, redder position sensor for the autopilot, and then we'll get to the uh, computer in a little bit after that. But here's our old one. I'm going to leave that in place, I think. I, I might take this arm off because we're going to use that hole so I don't have to drill a new hole. Um, but I'll leave that in place and wire it up just in case our our new system ever goes down. We can still revert back to the old one with very minor adjustments. Probably just zip tie that off to the side and be all good. And I'm going to mount this. My idea, it says you can mount it upside down so I've kind of marked it out. I want to line this up with the center here so that we get kind of the similar rotation as the actual rudder. And then this, I'm also marked the center of where the hole is right here. So I'm gonna line up the little joiner arm to, to that level. So we're gonna be at the exact same rotation. So that should make for super easy calibration on the system there and just going to mount that under here like that and it comes with this with this arm right here that's a little bit long for what I'm going to do. I can't see any reason why I can't cut this to length to make it kind of fit. It seems like they must want you to do that but it comes with very little instructions. I haven't looked too hard online yet, but that's about it. I don't know. That symbol right there mean you can cut it? Maybe. That's the paper that they give you with this thing, so I'm going to figure it out. And there's no reason why that shouldn't work. It basically just needs to track what the rudder's doing. So the length of that arm shouldn't, shouldn't affect the geometry of the sensor at all. So we'll get to it. Show you the end result. Well, that might have been the easiest install yet. All I had to do was drill a new hole right there, mount that upside down right there, turn the wheel a couple times, make sure everything clears and looks good. That's it, I think. Now i got to run the wire. Hopefully that's still as easy. Cross my fingers. I was able to leave the existing one in place. I had to bump it over just a little bit so it can stay, but I figure that's uh, better than trying to zip tie it, and then it's just a quick uh, flip of the switch almost to to get it back to the other old autopilot and that should be it for that project until we install the computer so the autopilot project is coming along but I had to run to West Marine again and I went to go get the specific right wires right colors and everything and I come back and strip it and it's red and yellow instead of red and black and I'm so pissed at myself for not checking that and also these little connections if you're gonna be doing one of these these are super tough to get the wire in without kind of fraying out the wire after you strip it so what i did was i dabbed a little bit of solder on the tips and that keeps all the strands together pretty nice you and so we'll get amazing. it oh thank you <laughs> so, <great. laughs> so smart and so I'm going to connect all these wires, all the little terminal blocks up in there. And then we'll slap it up on the wall in here. And what I'm going to do is actually use a little uh, battery selector switch that has uh, two positions on it for two different battery banks. It was the only three pole switch that I could find that's actually rated for 30 amps or more. This one's actually rated for 30 or 300 amps. But that's plenty and it'll work and it's not really much more than the other ones, so I'll do it. And so we can mount that on the wall there and we'll still have everything kind of transferable over with just the flip of a switch. So if our new autopilot goes down, the old one comes right back. Just flip a switch, so kind of cool setup. Ooh, look how organized he is. <laughs> He's color coded. <laughs> Um, so Where are you yeah. just color coordinate, coordinating in here? What are you That's doing? That's what I was doing, just hanging out. Um, <laughs> so yeah, I got it all kind of mounted to the wall, all pretty much set to go. Here's the idea with this, is um, basically the, the new autopilot will be on one. I can turn it off manually, but that's not really 
Something that I'm gonna be doing, I'll just turn off the circuit out at the uh, breaker panel there. And if I wanted to switch to the old autopilot, I'll just switch it to number two. And then I ended up getting a, you know, I what I thought was plenty of wire at West Marine, and I'm just like a, maybe one foot short over here. So that's <laughs> always fun. <fine. laughs> I could have maybe ran these a little bit um, tighter, but I wanted them all nice and swoopy and be able to tuck them away all nice. Haven't zip tied them, cleaned it all up yet, but yeah, basically that's the idea here. Looks like this uh, autopilot controller also had a lot more options for it to where we probably could have used some of our old components without upgrading the entire system, but why not? <laughs> Porque no? <laughs> oh man, that wall is starting to look better and better every day. Look at that. Like that. Coming together. Alright, so now we are replacing the oil tent, oil pressure sender. I just replaced the water temp sender right there. It's pretty easy. Just unscrew it, screw it back in. I put a new uh, little terminal end on there yeah hopefully we'll that'll work with the old gauge but i did get a new gauge just in case and now i'm doing the oil pressure sender and just got that out it was kind of a pain in the butt to get it out way way down there kind of had to found to reach my hand around this way and go yeah i got the new gauge right here i'm gonna just screw that in it's all uh, tapered threads, so supposedly there's no need for any type of sealant on there. Plus, you don't want to contaminate your oil with anything, so hopefully that goes on easy enough. And, oh look, it even... Oh, never mind. It was a 15 mil wrench, and I thought it said 15 on there. But, more engine work. Hopefully that'll work now, and uh, we'll be more secure motoring. So, stoked. Everything's coming together. So when I pulled this out, it was a little bit kind of crusty around there. So I found this little vacuum attachment that kind of narrows it down. So that should stick right around that hole and fit into that little tight space pretty well. And then I can just vacuum out all the little dust and paint particles from around there. So I uh, make sure to knock as few in there as possible when I put the new one in. So thought that was clever and share with you. Well, I literally just fired the motor up and it's been a couple minutes but it is uh, already reading super high pressure and super high temperature so looks like maybe these gauges are bad. Good thing I got new gauges too. I'll replace that and then if that doesn't work then it must be the wiring either way i wanted to replace all this stuff anyway so we we're dealing with newer stuff and kind of cut out a little bit of the variables so no big deal kind of was hoping that it would work better than that well i feel quite dumb right now i was just trying to start the engine check all the gauges right here and turns out when i was doing all the work on the fuel system I forgot to open the valve to the fuel filter there, and so I ran it out of fuel. I mean, I guess it's good that I didn't do this while I was trying to back out of the slip or something, but I've heard this is a pain in the butt. I'm not sure how hard it actually is, but I'm not really looking forward to this new project. One step forward, two steps back. Fun stuff. Whoops.